I often get asked about the best routine to fight hyperpigmentation, but while I have some sun damage and some post-inflammatory erythema, it is not my main skincare concern. So to be able to really show you what a skincare routine targeting mainly hyperpigmentation looks like and which effects you are able to get, I rope my baby sister into joining me today. And if I say baby sister, I'm only referring to her age. I may be the oldest of us four, but also the shortest. Meet Franziska, 37 years old, dog owner, music lover, smoker, and until two years ago, sun worshiper, rarely using sunscreen. She also prefers her routine to be quick and affordable, as opposed to me, she doesn't want to spend half her salary on cosmetics. As she also never used a retinoid or another so-called active before, we introduced the products one after the other over the course of around a month to make sure there was no irritation. Hi, I'm Dr. Anne, a medical doctor with a passion for skincare that works. On this channel, we explore the science behind skin and do quick reviews, so you learn to pick exactly those products that work for your individual skin concern. So, if this is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. Before and after pictures. As you can see in the before picture here, because I of course wasn't going to make her face the camera without makeup, she has a lot of sun damage merging into larger areas, mainly on her forehead, around the eyes and the cheekbones and on the chin area, basically on the sun terrace areas of the face, alongside more sparse patches on the cheeks. The before picture was taken in April, the after one you can see here in August, exactly four months after the first. Despite the difference in lighting and the usual disclaimer that nothing is faked as easily as before and after pictures, so never rely on these alone, you can see that while the hyperpigmentation is still very visible, the skin overall looks more even and the pigmentation has started to lighten. Some Something that is much more noticeable when you see it in person. Now, if you were hoping for a more drastic change, let me tell you that these are actually very decent results. Treating hyperpigmentation is a very slow process. We're talking months to years here, and you will never be able to get rid of it completely unless you use more invasive procedures like certain lasers and such. You will also need a combination of different ingredients that target different aspects of melanogenesis. Rarely will one product be enough to make a huge difference. So, which products did I put her on and how did she like them? My sister's morning skincare routine. My sister is not a morning person, so I knew it had to be quick and easy if I want her to stick with a routine, which is why we picked the minimalistic approach. Cleansing with water or a face wash of choice, then the Geek & Gorgeous 101 Sea Glow Serum and then sunscreen every day, rain or shine, reapply throughout the day and paired with a baseball cap for her dog walks. The Sea Glow Serum is my favorite, but how did it work for you? What did you like and dislike? I really liked the texture of the Sea Glow Serum and I felt like it gave my skin a healthy and fresh look, but I didn't like the smell of it. I had the smell on my fingers till I washed them three or four times. But with the dog, you wash your hands more often, so it was gone quick, and I will definitely continue using it. Fair enough. We picked vitamin C for several reasons. Firstly, it is an antioxidant, meaning it reduces oxidative stress through UV exposure and airborne pollution, in this case, the cigarette smoke. Second, it helps lighten hyperpigmentation, both by inhibiting tyrosine kinase, which is responsible for them appearing, and by reversing the dopakinone, which is dark, back to dopa, which is colorless and thus lighting already existing spots in the process. The third reason is that it supports collagen production, which has absolutely nothing to do with high pigmentation, but never hurts. Sunscreen is self-explanatory and the key element to any skincare routine fighting high pigmentation and the best one is the one you actually use. My favorites for more acne-prone skin are discussed in this playlist. Your priorities were easy to repurchase, affordable, and nice texture, alongside broad-spectrum protection, obviously. Which ones did you enjoy the most? I usually pick up some at the M. The Garnier one you recommended was very nice. Currently, I am using the Sundance. DM Sundance Pro Climate SPF 50 with a high protection. My sisters, 
evening skincare routine. Now onto the evenings, which is where we put the actives, mainly the retinaldehyde. I mean, you all know I wouldn't suggest a routine without adding a retinoid to the mix. But step by step, the routine was cleansing the face with a face wash of choice, and then every night the niacinamide serum by the Inkelis. It has 10% niacinamide, which is a little more than the recommended 5%, but most people do get along with it very well. And also glycerin and hyaluronic acid, so you don't need any additional hydrating stuff. I personally haven't tried the serum. I used the one with the sink from The Ordinary, as my skin is more on the oily side. So can you give us your consumer experience? I like the texture and that it absorbs quickly, so I didn't have to wait a long time to continue with my evening skincare routine. And it gave my skin a healthy, moisturized look without looking oily, and my skin was really soft after it. One of the benefits of niacinamide I forgot to mention is that it helps tolerating retinoids with less irritation. A smooth transition to the next skincare step, the Geek & Gorgeous A-Game 10. Retinoids are amazing for many different things and treating hyperpigmentation is among them. I talk more about that in my playlist here, but in short, they increase cell turnover, which means that the cells with additional melanin in them are shed quicker and the pigmentation fades. They also are a key part of routine tackling premature aging and as both smoking and UV exposure <laughs> increase the loss of collagen and elastin, I figured they were much needed as a part of this routine as well. Retinaldehyde, which is used in the A-game products, is the strongest form of retinoids available without a prescription in Germany, and it also comes with an increased risk of irritation. To minimize that risk, we slowly build it up until my sister was using it every other night. Now, how did that work for you? Did you experience any irritation? Any other things you want to share? The texture was nice and I had no irritations at all, but I had to wait to go to bed after using it or putting on a white shirt because if I don't, I'll have yellow stains on my pillow and shirts. But I liked it anyway, because I think it works well against hyperpigmentation and makes a really smooth skin. On the nights no retinoid was used, we picked another ingredient to fight hyperpigmentation and introduced the Inky List Tranexamic Acid Night Treatment. We could have picked other things like alpha albutin, kojic acid, licorice root extract as well, and we might change this up a bit in the future, but I had used and liked the tranexamic acid myself, so we went with it. Tranexamic acid works by inhibiting the plasminogen plasmine pathway, which is part of melanogenesis, so it hinders new melanin production. I have talked about this product before, especially mentioning the scent. How did you like it? I loved it. Texture feeling on the skin and it smells like barbecue sauce. That was the best of it. I mean, who didn't want to smell like barbecue sauce? Depending on your skin type, this routine can be followed up with a moisturizer. My sister's normal skin and didn't feel the need through the warmer month, as both the tranexamic acid as well as the aid game have a more lotion-like texture, but you might feel different. Any moisturizer will do, preferably one that doesn't have any other added actives. Now, if we look at that routine, is this the best routine for hyperpigmentation? I think is this the best one for my sister at the given time. Yes, there are more ingredients we could have combined for more impact, but I know for her to stick to it, it needs to be quick and not too complicated. I actively decided against the exfoliant as the retinol already increases cell turnover and I didn't want to risk irritation and I built the routine around that one and around the sunscreen. I also did not use hydroquinone as in Germany it is prescription and requires dermatological follow-up and we wanted a readily available routine. In the hierarchy of hyperpigmentation treating ingredients, I would always go sunscreen, retinoid, vitamin C and then fill in any free treatment spots and by that I mean nights where no retinoid is used with either tranexamic acid, kojic or maybe azelaic acid, with licorice root extract or with alpha abutene. Which one of these is best dependent by trying how they work for your individual skin? I hope you did enjoy getting to meet my sister and if you want to get a say in which topics I discuss next or which products I buy to review, head over to my Patreon account where you can get a vote. I'm going to link to more videos on the screen now that I think you might enjoy and I'm going to see you all very soon with another one. Bye!